this used to be a 40 mile an hour speed limit you have to remind yourself these days that it is no longer a 40 <laughs> it's quite easy to forget when they change speed limits looking all the way up the road as far as the bus that's the limit of my vision at the moment checking my mirrors Oh, it's a bit chilly in this direction. Must be where the wind's coming from. Watch the van mirrors just in case, covering my horn. Position three. Gonna stay out here for the car with his brake lights on, unless they're lights, I'm not sure. And fingers and thumbs away. Oh, well, that was helpful, wasn't it, Mr. Mrs. Mercedes? Just pull out regardless of the fact that there's traffic coming. Mirrors, van's gonna come out. Early mirrors, easing off a little bit. Gonna be cheeky here and sneak up the right hand side because I know it's two lanes. I need to plan the gap that I want to use for merging. Lifesaver, and then drop back from the car in front a little bit. Sometimes it helps to indicate when you're merging as well. Let's change into a more comfortable gear now that I don't need the power to get away from the traffic. Keeping a good eye on those mirrors. And a good distance back from the car in front so I've got a good view up the road I can see ahead nicely and it gives me time to plan for the road surface remember if you're too close to the vehicle in front it's very difficult to plan for an obstacle in the middle of the lane because you won't see it until you're going over it purely because the car tyres won't go over it but you're likely to I'm going to be turning right at these lights and then right at the roundabout, so I'm going to stay in the far right lane. Planning my distance back from the van. I don't really want to sit out to either side of this lane because of the oncoming traffic and the traffic to my left, so I'm going to stay a little bit further back from the van on this occasion. On other occasions, it is safe to move out to the far reaches so you're in the line of their mirror. But I feel safer here for now. I have a little check. Watch, because they're not moving off yet. Just keep an eye on the vehicles to the left in case they cut into this lane. matching the speed of the van without getting too close. watch this mini quite often cars will end up in the wrong lane here okay I'm not making progress in this lane so I'm gonna move in not for the purposes of passing these vehicles but just because I should be in the left of the available lanes early mirrors let's watch what this van does on the roundabout just in case he tries to get past check move watch the surface watch the surface that is really slippy mud <laughs> be smooth when i came down here earlier it wasn't covered in mud like this it was just wet. 
so don't assume even on the same day that the road surface is going to be the same it was only about an hour ago that I came down this road and it was clean so when I chose to come past the car at the roundabout I had already decided I was going to be relatively positive with my throttle I had to make quite a quick decision back there just to decide to be very very smooth and careful with it lovely I could have done with one more gear down then it's a little bit chuggy as I came onto the roundabout again keeping it smooth but positive early mirrors just going to ease off come down into fourth gear and hold it steady at 32 and avoid these little drain covers which are quite sunken they can be quite bumpy the lights are going to change but I'm good to go moving in at the end of the bus lane and we're going to be turning left at the lights so mirrors don't indicate until I'm past the junction although there's nobody there on this occasion just good practice to remember that lovely so that was an example of where I did need to use the clutch for coming around the turn because it was quite tight and I was in third gear looking ahead park cars on the right there's one car coming past and a van at the junction so i'm just going to reduce my speed a little bit that's well, going to go on with the bus the van's staying put the bus is waiting get out of his way give him a little wave lovely equalizing the danger between pedestrian and park vehicles Keeping a good eye on my mirrors, watching for anybody coming out of driveway entrances on the right that I can't see because they're hidden by the park vehicles. Early mirrors in case the blue car decides to go, watching his wheels. After the blue car I'm going to move in to the left away from the white car. I'm going to bring my speed down for the bend, a little bit of both brakes, down a gear, hold position in two, watch for anybody coming past these park vehicles, over to one out of the way of the red car, and then an early shoulder check to come out past the van. Oops, a little bit early with my throttle on my gear change there. <coughs> Gonna bring my speed down a little bit as I can't see around the bends. Watch for the man with the puppy. Early shoulder check to come past the van. Speed comes right down now. This is a small gap. Watching for them coming out behind this van. Pop my indicator on for any pedestrians. Trying to keep my tyres out of the leaf debris in the centre of the road there. Or the centre of my lane. Take the next road on the right. Bring my speed down. Good look. Check and turn.
straight ahead at these lights. It's a lefty right. <laughs> Should be careful not to go up the wrong side of the bollards. Notice the blue background white arrow is telling you which side of that bollard you should be going. You'd be surprised how many students are tempted to go into the wrong gap opposite here. And usually it's the students who don't have a car license that will make a mistake like that. So know your road signs. Just keeping a good eye on my mirrors. Two cars behind. I'll check anyway, because I'm going lefty righty. Make sure nobody's cutting across from the other side. No one coming up on my right either. Opening the throttle against the hill. Plan for the car to come past the bicycle. No harm in me moving in there, even though there was a junction on the left, there was nobody approaching the junction. And again, moving in for these cars to allow them to come past. Just adjusting my speed a little bit. Mirrors, brakes, clutch, gears, rear brake. Gonna leave this entrance way clear. Turn these heated grips down now. Starting to get burny hands. I'm going to keep my speed down as I come through this gap. Small gap, less speed. Always the possibility the lights will likely to change then. So rather than launching myself towards a car that's waiting to turn right, just held back a little bit until I was happy they were staying green. Looking all the way in front of this queue of vehicles. Trying to plan nice and early for any hazards ahead. As soon as I see a cyclist, I expect there to be a car coming up behind it who's going to be going for an overtake. Plan my line for good surface. And at the mini roundabout, I'm going to turn right. Once again, waiting to signal until I'm past the side road. Down to just my rear brake. Not get too close to the car that's rolling back on its clutch. Left signal run. He's not going, I'm going. Quite a lot of cars tend to be very indecisive at mini roundabouts, which can be rather useful for us because it gives us the opportunity to get onto the mini roundabouts. But we get it with a lot of riders as well. They'll stop as a matter of habit at the mini roundabout rather than assessing on the approach whether it's good to go. Quite often people will stop out of habit on a mini roundabout without looking at the whole situation. So they'll be staring at the entrance to the right without realising that the car coming from the other side is stopping that vehicle from getting onto the mini roundabout which means they would have been able to get onto it earlier. So just a little bit of planning would help. Think about the mini roundabout as a whole, don't just look to the right and don't habitually stop when you come up to a mini roundabout. If it's good to go and there's nobody on it, then go. nice and positive up to the speed limit fourth gear looking around the bend watching the surface checking my mirrors change of speed limit mirrors once I'm through the signs then I can accelerate nice and positively because the surface is currently okay mirrors again Early mirrors, brake lights ahead, easing off, early brakes to let the car behind know that we need to slow down a little bit earlier. Still checking my mirrors as I'm braking to make sure he is slowing down. Just 
still leaving myself just enough room to be able to ride out of this position if I need it, so not getting too close. We usually see somewhere between a bike and a car's length. So a car can't get into that gap, but it gives you enough space to be able to ride out of that space if you need to. Turning left at the lights, this Ford Focus is being quite pushy behind. I'm just leaving myself a good gap between me and the Mini in front. Bring my speed down, choose a gear, hold it steady, mirrors and power. I'm not being forced to take bends too quickly just because somebody's close up my backside. In fact, it would be counterproductive to do that because if I took it too quickly and came off, I'm more likely to get hit. Sometimes it's just a matter of timing and speed control for coming through obstacles like that. So I didn't have to stop and put my foot down, I just needed to time it carefully and make sure I did the appropriate safety checks. Taking the next road on the right, mirrors signal lifesaver in position, or just mirrors for me. I knew there wasn't anybody there. I'm going to do a lifesaver before I turn right though because I wasn't 100% certain there was nobody there at that point. Hopefully there's one or two little bits of information in there that might be useful. Time for me to get back to the test centre to see if my students passed. Previous student passed with no faults. Oh, he's not back yet. Let's wait and see. I'll tell you next time. Thanks for watching. See you next time.